Let's talk about how business is going, because in the United States, we look at some of the airlines here and things are booming. Is it the same thing, Michael, over in Europe? Uh, good morning, guys. Uh, yes, it is. It's booming and getting boomier. Uh, EasyJet uh, released uh, quite an up, uh, uh, quite an up-tempo pre-results statement yesterday. I'm afraid we have our full-year results at the end of uh, May, so I'm in a closed period. Can't comment other than what we previously said is, as we emerge out of COVID, demand uh, for air travel across Europe this year is very strong. Pricing <coughs> is rising. Uh, we're seeing the benefit of people going back traveling uh, all summer long, and there's an invasion of Europe being, I'm pleased to say, a report being taken place by Americans coming over here to play our <laughs> golf courses, visit our beaches, join in our cultural experiences. And I'm very pleased to welcome the Bloomberg New Economy Gateway Conference here to the Garden of Ireland in Wicklow this morning. Although I'm suffering from hay fever, it's not a good day to be in the Garden of Ireland. Well, Michael, I'm sorry to miss you over in Ireland. Let's pick up on Europe. Capacity. There is a frustration with travellers in the United States. When's the capacity coming back on so that we can get better airline fares and we can be a little bit more comfortable, Michael? How disciplined are you being about that? Uh, we're not. We're taking as many aircraft as we can from Boeing. Uh, this summer, we're going to be operating. We plan to carry about 185 million passengers this year, which is up about 30% uh, on our pre-COVID numbers. So as soon as we can get the aircraft from Boeing, we're flying them. But overall, short-haul capacity in Europe will still be down around 5 or 10% on pre-COVID capacity. Some of the <coughs> European airlines have gone bust. The Thomas Cooks, Flybe, Alitalia, TAP have only returned at half the size they previously were. Aircraft capacity in Germany. Germany, where Lufthansa is doubling prices, is only, is only operating at 80% of pre-COVID. So capacity is a challenge. And I think over the medium term, you know, the inability of uh, Airbus and Boeing to deliver any meaningful increase in production means I think capacity is going to continue to be challenging for the next uh, two, three, five years. I, I, I look where we are, and to me, sitting on the runways, it's about a limitation of airports, whether it's continental Europe or the United States, maybe even Asia. But there just doesn't seem to be enough airports, enough, enough gates. Are you waking up every morning saying to yourself, we've got to get the underlying infrastructure rebuilt for 2030? I, no, well, I, mean, there's a, a, I think it's a differential, Tom, between the U.S. market and in Europe. In Europe, there's many more airports available. Uh, there is a focus on three of the big hub airports, Heathrow, Paris, and Frankfurt, Maine, which have never really worked that efficiently, those hub-and-spoke airports. They're challenging. But there's lots of uh, other airports, second uh, city airports and secondary airports at main cities, which is essentially where Ryanair flies to. The big challenge for us in Europe is air traffic control, which continues to be a mess. Uh, the French air traffic controllers going on their recreational striking two, three times a week. The French use minimum <laughs> service legislation to protect the French domestic <clears throat> flights, and they cancel all the overflights. Okay. We've been calling repeatedly on the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, to get do something to protect overflights. So we don't have any issue with the French going on strike, but if they're going to go on strike in France, cancel the French flights and leave the Spanish, the German, and the Italian flights alone. As recreational striking takes up around Europe, and frankly, probably globally, I'm curious how much that jacks up salaries and allows people to absorb some of the price increases that you've put out there for Ryanair tickets. And we've seen pretty much across the board. It is getting more expensive and people are paying it without even thinking. When does it become too much? Have you sort of tested the barriers of when people start pushing back? I don't think, Lisa, we've tested the barriers, but I mean, it's a very unusual, I find myself in a very unusual situation here in Europe. Everybody's talking all winter long about energy crisis, consumer prices, rising interest rates, yet fundamentally we're dealing with an economy across Europe where there's full employment. People are receiving their wages at the end of every month and they're spending money. I mean, I think the... Yeah, it feels almost like, I don't know what the 1920s were like after the Spanish flu or the First World War, but it's almost like people are determined to spend and spend on travel in particular. I think that being locked up for two years with COVID has driven people back to the beaches of Europe. People have money and they are spending it. It is very difficult to get a restaurant reservation, a hotel or a, a flight in Europe. And now Ryanair is still offering the lowest fares in every market in which we operate, which is right across Europe. But even we're seeing our fares. Last year we saw fares rise by uh, 14, 15 percent. We think this summer, and I'm on record as a, you know, I think it'll be maybe, we might get to double digit again, maybe 10 percent increase in airfares. Uh, but that's two years in a row of double digit airfare increases.
So people are spending, I think we're nowhere near American level of airfares. You know, Southwest average fare last year was about 110 bucks. Our average fare last year was 44 euros. So it's still much cheaper to fly in Europe, but there's no doubt that it is not, it is getting a little bit more expensive, particularly as we move through the summer of 2023. But remember, this is the airline industry, and when things are going well, it means the next crisis is probably about four days away.